the day has come where we're going to start thinking about the wiring and the install and uh, I didn't even get a chance to film and he just ripped into it. Got to get stuck into it, no other way to do it. What's happening here? So we're just going to lay out all the Victron stuff and figure out where it's all going to go on the nice board we've got laid out and uh, just going to figure it all out. We've got our diagram here we're going to follow and one thing at a time. So what have you done over here? What's, what's all this? So we've got our shunt, we've got our two Lynx distributors, and we've just hooked them up. They're all going to be together anyway, so that big bit we can find a place for on the board, that and the inverter. Yeah, they're going to look very pretty, aren't they? So they've got these these covers, cover yeah. plates, and basically these are just giant bus bars essentially. So yeah, that's going to look much. amazing and, uh, and be very, very easy to wire up, I imagine, yeah? Yep, yeah, it's going to be easy. It's got all the fuses built in, so we'll Brilliant. be able to choose what fuses we need, and yeah, very easy. Cool, cool. Well, he's confident. I'm not confident, but I'm confident because he's confident. And that's all you need, really. That's good. You just need someone that's confident. <laughs> Right, I'm getting to the point where I'm going to install these stairs. Now, they've been sitting here for over three years and uh, I've had to have access in and out, in and out, and now I'm finalising the conduit runs underneath them so I can start to think about getting them in. There is a bit of an issue with this area here in between the bulkhead and the stairs. Uh, it's just transpired that I've got about a centimetre gap. Now, I can do a couple of things. I can end up with just a flop of reinforcement 600 double bias or something and you know ultimately and just fill it or i can back it with composite angle and by putting the composite angle on the edges along these straight lines here underneath i can actually form a very solid backing with which to glue the module to and then secondly to backfill and then do the final tie-in with the uh with the tabbing such as i've done up here where you're tabbing one surface to the module you need to have backing and uh, and doing the backing in there was just a winner because now i've got a perfectly uh, smooth seam in between one module the deck and the bulkhead below so there's plenty of stuff to think about i think backing in behind is the key now the problem is you're doing it all side and seam i've made a number of marks as to how that's going to integrate but i need to lift the module out screw them on try the module in and, uh, and by screwing them in the right place, hopefully that'll give me the place with which to epoxy them. And I can epoxy them in place and then I know that when the module goes back in, it's going to fit. So I've done this with every single module that I've installed and it really has made a big difference to the fitment of them, getting them down to very low tolerances rather than having massive gaps to deal with. All right, for the third time today, I'm going to lift this module out and, uh, and see if I can get it to fit correctly. It's all right there, every now and then it just moves and it hasn't done that before. So I'm wondering why I potentially got something catching underneath with the new Blackwater tank. So we'll need to sort that out prior to me installing this correctly. So I'll we'll lift him out again, and I'm just going to stand it up here, and I can still work him behind here. We can see down here the marks that I've made for some composite angles. And what I've got is something like this. This guy will go in here, like this and that'll fill the gap in between the module and the stairs. And then I've got a tiny little one here that I've had to cut down, uh, cut half of it down to go here. And I've got another one here, and then another one down here. So there's plenty to fit here, but I'll do them with screws and then uh, I'll fit the module and then if it fits, then I know it's in the right place. Now, believe it or not, putting these in actually looks like you're sort of fitting bits and pieces, but you, in reality, you end up with a much neater interface between the module and the boat. Um, eventually, because what you're actually doing is backfilling and then glassing over the top, and you've got a nice, neat face on the underside, which a lot of boats are just a sort of wherever you can reach, you're going to poke some glass in, and hopefully it'll all hold together. But with this stuff, you sort of guarantee that you're going to have a good... Uh, seal between the module and the and the actual boat itself and then once the module's in place it's going to sit here I'll be able to then tab and glass and this will be solid creating a really squeak free environment
All right, so with those in place there now, I can actually poxy those in place and uh, and basically put some screws in and just leave them there and then I'll lift the module out one more time. Okay, it's a bit hard to film that one, so uh, I've actually glued those in. There's a couple of screws in there and you'll notice that I'll put some masking tape joining them together so that once I get them glued in place and remove the screws, I can actually put some epoxy in through it and that, that tape will remain in there forever uh, basically joined with epoxy but at least it's a way of holding the epoxy in place that I'm going to use to fill these gaps but yeah that'll work and uh, I'll work this module back in now and, uh, and I'm ready to move on uh, it's okay to have all these wonderful conduits that I've been putting in but having access to the entry points and the exit points is now the key and if you haven't got that access you're in trouble because you're going to be reaching into very very long and narrow compartments trying to feed masses and I'm talking bundles of wire like this some of which is this sort of size into those cavities and yeah I don't think that's going to be possible I've got uh, a lot of conduits but I've got to make sure I now have access to them so what I've been doing over the last few days I've been cutting out the access hatches in the floor to run all of my bilge pump and plumbing but uh, for the bilge pumps themselves they, they all have to feed back up into this section here and to their respective fuses and then onto the uh, onto the batteries obviously and onto the breaker board but at the end of the day I've got access through here but I don't have access down in there in the side of that module where these conduits are and these conduits I put in a long long time ago and this is the thing when you build a boat you got to put all these systems in almost 12 18 months before you even need them to make sure that you've got final access to them when the time comes. So I'm gonna to have to cut a hole out in the side of that module there to be able to access those four entry points that I have, which actually take the windlass wiring forward, the um, the navigation lights or the, yeah, the basically the port and starboard light and the searchlight function that I intend to have on the boat all the way forward. And So in the electrical cabinet here, I've got uh, very, very good access to the inverter and all of the fuses and uh, and the link system that I'm going to have in there and the battery systems in behind there. So I really only have about three feet maximum of uh, of cabling from the battery to the Lynx V shunt. Dan in here, you can see I've actually got four entry points and two 50 mil conduits as well as the facility to run even more should I need to but I need to get access to that. So that is going to come through a small hatch here. So I'll cut a small hole, so at least Zach and I got plenty of room to run our wires and uh, and Jeff. And then we can basically put in the AC panel up in here. I haven't decided what size I'm gonna make. I haven't decided what size I'm gonna make that compartment there yet, but at least if I've got a hole, I can get into it. So at the base of the stairs here, I've got a conduit running here up in the forward cabin running forward or sorry running towards the stern and then here at the base of the stairs here I'm going to have to cut a hole now I don't know what size hatch I'm going to put I might put a nice wooden door on here I don't really want to have too much white plastic hatches in the inside of the boat I don't mind them outside but certainly inside we want to have something nice and then this here is the AC breaker panel that's going to be fitting in there so basically if I cut this hole out now that will reveal uh, two massive conduits or two 50 mil conduits with some entry points to run them stern and towards the bow and uh, I'll get in and hack this one out and then I'm going to move towards the back and do the same up in the rear compartment where it all leads into the helm station. We've already had a quick run through the boat, which we'll do a bit later, as to how we're going to do all the wiring. We've had a good think about it, and uh, and I've been thinking about it for about two years. So I've, hopefully I've got enough conduiting in. I'm not sure I have, but at least we're, I think we're about 80% ready on the boat. We're just not 100% ready here, because I haven't got it quite in my head yet. But I've been doing a lot of study and uh, gone down the rabbit hole every night for five hours a night, working everything out. But as you can see, we've got absolutely everything here ready to go in and uh there's a lot of money sitting here <laughs> a lot of money sitting here i'll tell you it's a lot more room than we thought we had <laughs> so that's going in yeah now you know how i feel about twice the size of you and i've been in there for weeks 
you this is your fault you know because you said make sure you fit the module <laughs> i could have left the module loose so it slid out yeah. but zach said no fit the module we'll work with it and yeah, i'm sort of it would have given us a false sense of hope of how easy it was false this, sense of hope yeah this is realistic <laughs> yeah that's right yeah. yeah, that's actually good. It's got to give a bit more headroom as well. Yeah. So I've already decided our air conditioning ducting is not going to go through this part. I've decided uh, we can actually vent it in through there, yeah. up above the battery compartment, and that way we're not dealing with anything crossing our, our wires here. Cool. Cool. Okay, we've been working through the electrical compartment, and Zach's been in there for a few hours, and uh, all we've done so far is made a whole lot of cardboard templates, but that's pretty essential when it comes to this, so I'm gonna let him explain. All right, so yeah, well, that's all we've been doing, we're making cardboard cutouts and uh, figuring out where everything's gonna go so that the cable routing isn't going excessively long distances and everything's direct and easy to trace. Um, so we've got, starting from coming from the batteries, we've got our shunt into our two links distribution panels. Our inverter's right here, which means that the power in on the DC side is going to come straight from this links here, which means that's going to be a really short run there. Uh, and then we've also got, we're going further across, we've got our um, battery protectors here before we go into our bus bars. And then our bus bars are going to feed our fuse holders and then our switchboard. So we're kind of working down from the power, the batteries, and obviously the AC down into our protection and then filtering down into the distribution side which is going to be our bus bars and our fuse board. So we're kind of going big to small. Um, so it's going to be neat and we'll be able to follow stuff. So that's that's the idea. And we ran out of room for our solar controllers, didn't we? So they're going to be yeah. behind Zach there. They're going to be right over the back up there. the back here. And then also on this wall here, if we swap sides. There we go. Here we've also got a couple more bus bars. Um, these are going to be for high draw components, so these are going to be resettable circuit breakers. Also got a spare fuse block, we're just going to put that in as a provision for the future. We probably won't need it at the moment, but it's always good to have it set up, so if we want to add more accessories later on, that's already wired up. Uh, and then this is just separate, so for things like the, the winch, um, the anchor, all of those things will come off this side here and run separately to the other side. Brilliant. So most of it's going to distribute down where Zach's legs are into the port side here and down to uh, down to the stern where this the AC is going to come from this side and then we're going to also direct it across the dinette module, across the top of the battery or across through some conduits I'm about to cut in the wall there and then obviously subsequently to the galley, uh, the forward head, the washing machine, the air conditioner and all of that. That'll be mainly AC and then the DC will be along the bottom, wasn't it? DC is going to be here. Yep. They're going to be our battery inputs and then that's going to be our AC to run to the other side. So right. it's all going to be separate. So when we're trying to trace them and stuff in the future, we know exactly which conduit to go to. We're not digging them out of one big conduit. Very nice. I think that's quite well thought out. That took us, what, three hours to come up with that? It took us, yeah, about three, four hours to do yeah. this, but I think it'll save us a lot of time. Yeah, it saves right. us a lot of time so we can have everything neat and, uh, and flowing into the correct places without too much complication. The other thing... Well, the other thing that we came up with was I need to be able to lay in there. And uh, we struggled a little bit with this little edge here, so I'm gonna be trimming that off and getting it down to about an inch high. And this whole door will open up so that we can lay in there and, uh, and obviously access terminals and wiring in all the things. So we're trying to keep the floor totally free of any, uh, any obstructions and any wiring as much as possible so that we can access it at any time. Yeah, so we brought our cardboard down to our panel or our panels, we're gonna have three white panels, so it's gonna look yeah. really nice, all the blue Victron stuff. Yeah. But what was you what were you saying? Well, I was about to start mounting stuff and then I just had a quick rethink. I was gonna have both of the battery protectors on that big panel, but I was just glancing over the diagram here, and now I think I'm actually gonna split the two battery protectors. So one of them is gonna sit on this board here, which will run all the low DC loads yep, such as bilge pumps and bilge pumps lights fans all that kind like. of stuff yep and then on the high draw dc panel which is going to be on the other side which is going to be anchor electric winch um 
probably the autopilot pump, things like that. Yep. They're all going to be over here and we'll run a separate battery protector to the separate bus bars yep. that run all that because we've got two anyway and they need to be split somehow. So yep. we might as well put one here to run all of this yep. and one here, which frees up space on this board here for wiring. Yeah, so we discovered that the, um, yeah. the autopilot pump was a 40 amp fuse, didn't we? So we're gonna put in a switched, a resettable fuse. We're just gonna put a resettable circuit breaker. Yeah. The wiring loom that comes with it's too short anyway. Yeah, yeah. So. so we've got to add to it anyway. Yeah, yeah good, thinking on your feet, mate. That's yeah. awesome. All right, so we've had good progress today. Day one's been all about cutting five pieces of cardboard. That's all we got done, wasn't it, mate? Yeah. Well, I think oh, we've so done all right. Far, we haven't stopped yet. <laughs> I think we've done pretty well. We've actually got this as the main board. Our inverter will sit there here, and then this is our high loads board, I'd imagine. Is that, that's what it is, isn't it? Oh, no. Yes, that is our high load board, and then this one here is going to be our solar MPPT board. So now what are we doing? Now we're gonna cut stuff. Cut some holes. Let's go Blue for it. some stuff, let's do it. Good stuff, let's do that. <laughs> That's it. That's yeah, that's going to look great. And now I'll drill the rest of them. Yep, fantastic. Well done. Did well. Did you want a spirit level? <laughs> no. Too late for that. Too late. Frustrating? Yeah. It's, uh, it's What's tedious. That? What just happened then? <laughs> uh, Drill bit snapped because we had to get it on a funny angle. Oh. Then we had to get it out and it snapped again, but we got it out for good this time. We got it out, so we're about to hang the inverter in there and that's gonna look absolutely amazing. And I've done all the dusty work, Zach's been in there hole sawing and check out the conduits that are going through. They're about to be epoxied in so we have no squeaks. And uh, yeah, you can sort of see what we're trying to do, but check out this panel. I mean, that is gonna look absolutely amazing, I reckon. That's brilliant. Well, uh, what are you doing? This is uh, inverter test fit number one. Yeah, it's a bit of like a yoga position. Like 27 kilos. 58 pounds, I think it is. 27 kilos of awkward though. Yeah, it's pretty awkward. Because the weight's up the top if yeah. the weight is down the bottom. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just I'm super, super careful with it. That's it. Is that it? What stops it doing that? Ah, uh, two bolts in the bottom. You reckon that's it? Yeah, that's that must it. be. Yeah, that's where it is. Wow. Wow, oh. that looks pretty oh. Jesus. Look at that. Well, that's all we need. We're not, we're no wasted space here. Wow. Yeah, I think there's, actually have a look in the bottom there. See if there's two, a bolt hole we can. See that? Oh yeah. That bottom one there's the earth. So there's two here. Yeah, see that bottom screw in the middle? I think that's the earth. That, that yeah. is. Yeah, that's the grounding strap for this. Yeah. For the whole sheath. Yeah, okay. Well, all right, let me mark out those two. Brilliant. Yeah, oh, looking nice. beautiful. Let's through bolt these. Oh, no, we don't mount them until the end. Huh? Till we make sure it's all right. Let's just get the bracket on and just hang it. It's not gonna, it's not gonna fall down, I'm not gonna be in there again. End of day one of the electrical dry fit and Zach and I have had a massive day. We've basically got the complete Victron system laid out and ready to mount on our board. It's going to mount on my main compression bulkhead. Now, that is a plywood bulkhead, so I have a paranoia about any moisture entering into one of our plywood bulkheads. So I've actually uh, beckoned him to drill the holes where we need to mount and oversize those holes. I'm now going to mix up a bag of epoxy and fill those holes to seal them. And then tomorrow afternoon we'll be able to come in and re-drill them 
and then mount the uh, backing board and then all the Victron system will be mounted all in one hit. So and then down here in the battery compartment you can see there's quite a bit been going on. We've actually put in a main conduit along the bottom for our DC system, another conduit up here for our AC wires, and we've also got another one up the top here for our Servo GX system. Um, and this is looking towards the electrical system. I've also got the allowance there for our main battery wires. I've kept them separate. We don't want too much heat in these conduits, so we're trying to keep everything a little bit separate, but that's been a, a really big job actually doing all that. My job now is to epoxy these in place so that tomorrow they're not going to move, and then we can cut some vent holes. We want to allow a little bit of airflow through these. All of these holes in here have got to now be filled with epoxy before I go home. So I'm just going to go and mix up a batch and I'm going to glue it in place, go home and I'm going to have a beer.